What gives a film a strong atmosphere? Sometimes the elements that surround the characters and story in a film, the cinematography, sound design, costume, and set design, come together to produce a singular mood or feeling. And when a film has a mood or feeling that's consistent throughout, a mood that is unique from what we generally experience in everyday life, we often say that film has atmosphere. In one interview, director Robert Eggers mentions just a few elements that create the lighthouse's atmosphere of a, of a black and white, crusty, dusty, rusty, musty world uh, in, in a boxy aspect ratio with the, the pipe smoke and the facial hair and the Guernsey sweaters and the salt cod. And what's the story that then suits that atmosphere? Should pale death with treble dread make the ocean caves our bed. God, who is the surge's role, deign to save our suppliant soul to four weeks. For Eggers, the atmosphere is the foundation that his stories grow out of, and many of his very specific controlled creative decisions are in service of creating that atmosphere. A film's atmosphere as a whole is complex and difficult to label, but we can seek to understand what it is and how it's created by looking at some of the individual elements of the lighthouse that help create that atmosphere. This video is made possible by NordVPN. Go to nordvpn.com slash thomasflight for 70% off a three-year plan. If we look at the script, the creation of the lighthouse's atmosphere begins very early on with a technical note. Shooting the lighthouse in black and white wasn't an option, it was a core part of the story and setting from the beginning. Black and white cinematography serves to emphasize textures in place of color. And the lighthouse is a world of texture. Every surface feels covered in grime, dust, or mold. It's all rusting, rotting, and disintegrating. The choice of black and white is also the first step to set the world in a place unique from our own. It looks and therefore feels different to us. Black and white cinematography even makes clear skies feel gray and oppressive. When looking at behind the scenes footage for The Lighthouse, it strikes me just how strange seeing these characters and this world in color feels, starkly illustrating just how vital black and white is to the feeling of the film. Just below this is a second technical note. The aspect ratio of 1.19 to 1 is the middle ground between a perfectly square frame and the 4 by 3 silent film ratio. It was briefly used during the transitional period from silent to sound. Eggers describes this choice as being motivated not as an attempt to ground the film in that history, but to create a frame that would be optimal for composing images with the height of the lighthouse itself and simultaneously create an enclosed claustrophobic feeling, two elements that directly relate to the atmosphere. The film looks like it's lit almost entirely naturally, but the slow black and white film stock required extensive bright lighting. The scenes that look like they're lit by a single flame are actually 500 watt bulbs in the lamps. It's almost as if these men are lit by the piercing harsh light of a lighthouse cutting through the darkness. There are more technical details in how this film was shot than I could lay out in this video, like the choice to shoot on lenses that are almost a century old, giving many shots the very specific texture where the image is out of focus, and vignetting at the edges of the frame. But the key to notice here is that no aspect of the cinematography was arbitrary. Each decision was made to serve the atmosphere Eggers was trying to create. Sound is a vital element of atmosphere. In fact, when I think of atmosphere in film, I usually think first of David Lynch's Eraserhead. And the way sound design creates an entire world surrounding the characters in that film.
The lighthouse similarly uses sound design to remind us of the forces that are constantly just outside the frame surrounding our characters. Whether it's the wind, the waves, the seagulls, the rain, something more sinister and mysterious, or the foghorn. The foghorn that feels like it never stops. You get the feeling that the foghorn alone could drive these men to madness. Might even drive the audience to madness. One of the impressive things about the lighthouse is that Eggers and his crew found a piece of rock on the coast of Nova Scotia and built a working lighthouse and the accompanying buildings. Shooting on a real location with real elements battling actual weather makes those elements ever present in the film's production and then in the film itself. Eggers and his team's close attention to period detail when building these sets, designing costumes, and writing dialogue all work together to create a feeling of a specific time and place. And while period accuracy in a film doesn't always create atmosphere, a world that has a lived-in quality does. That quality extends the world of the film beyond its running time, creating an atmosphere that feels like it exists outside of our characters in the moment the story is happening, as if it haunts this place long before they show up and after the story ends. But it's not just these elements that create atmosphere, but the way they're presented. If we return to the script, we can see how deliberately elements of the atmosphere are introduced, a few at a time, placing emphasis on each part of the atmosphere as it assembles. We hear the foghorn before we see anything, and the first thing we see is fog. The mechanical chugging of the ship might as well be the engine in the foghorn room. We see and hear waves, all elements that establish the atmosphere before we even see the characters or the actual lighthouse. Some people may object to this emphasis on atmosphere, saying that the story should come first, but this atmosphere is crucial to what the lighthouse is. The lighthouse has a story, but it's ambiguous, asking more questions than it ultimately answers. It deals with many themes and can be interpreted in different ways. If you go to see The Lighthouse with four friends, you'll probably walk out of the theater with five different takes on what's happening, but you probably all felt the same atmosphere. And that atmosphere is the uniting force that grounds the film, even as the characters and the story lose their grip on reality. This video is sponsored by NordVPN. NordVPN is my personal choice in VPN. A VPN is a great tool for taking back control of your privacy and security online. Increasingly these days, content on the internet is divided or excluded based on geographic location. With NordVPN, you can choose from any of their thousands of super fast servers in over 60 countries, and it makes it look like you're visiting a website from the location you choose. It's a great way to get access to content in other countries when you need to, or get around firewalls that might be censoring things, giving you a way to take back a little bit more control of your internet use. When you go to nordvpn.com slash thomasflight, you'll get 70% off a three-year plan. That means your monthly cost will only be $3.49. Use code thomasflight at checkout or go to nordvpn.com slash thomasflight to get 70% off 
a three-year plan plus an entire month for free.